Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hi, welcome to today's interview. Now, you know that I like to talk to entrepreneurs of all kinds, of all expertises, at all different levels of their business. And today I'm talking to Susan McCustion. She's the president and owner of Day One, and she's also the creator of Compassionate Diversity. This is a company that she's an expert in diversity and inclusion, speaking and training, and she's been doing this for over 20 years. And the reason I wanted to really talk to Susan today, and she's going to talk about entrepreneurship, diversity, inclusion, all of the things she's an expert in is because social justice, racial equity is something that every entrepreneur is dealing with, whether they know it or not. And so we're going to be better at it if we know it and we have some tools to help us. So that's why Susan's here today to talk to us about the work that she does, why it's so important in the work that we do as entrepreneurs and how to help our clients in the way that we do. So Susan, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been like a heroic journey just to get on this call together. I can't even tell you guys what happens to us in getting on this call. So I'm so glad you're here. Let's go. Oh, good. So Susan, can you start by telling us briefly how you support and serve business owners? Yeah, yeah. So I help business owners build more inclusive workplaces using compassion and resilience. When we're able to recognize not only how we're more connected, but also the differences that make us unique, then we can build more successful businesses because we are able to build uh, more successful results for our clients, more successful products that our customers want to buy. And so what we want to do is recognize those things that we have in common so that we can create shared meaning and then also recognize those differences so that we get that innovation that, that we need to be successful. What I love about what you're hinting at here is that we don't want to all assimilate. We don't want to all look the same. It's not okay to say we're all the same. I don't see color. Like we want to say, I see your difference. I honor the differences, right? I think that's what you're getting at here. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. You know, there's a model that I use and the middle of this model is called minimization, meaning that we minimize differences. And when you think about it, Jen, we're really taught to do that. We're taught right. that that's the polite thing to do, right? right to say, right, right. <laughs> right? To say that I'm colorblind. Oh, it doesn't matter. We're just such great friends, right? Except that color matters, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of that is because of the system that we work in and that has been built and has been in place for years and years and years. Another thing that we say with when, when we're minimizing some of these differences, I treat other people like I want to be treated. That's great. And what if everybody doesn't want to be treated the way that you want to be treated? What are you going to mm-hmm. do then? Right. One of the, the big examples I use there, respect, right? We all want to be respected. But how we show respect can be very, very different from culture to culture. My husband, born and raised in Montgomery, Alabama, right? Part of the behavior of respect for him, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Oh, right. Probably right, not right. surprised, right? Doesn't want to surprise right. anybody listening. I can be upstairs. I hear him downstairs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, he's on the phone with dad, right? And that's all that there is to it. Now, we live in the Chicago area. For a while, he reported to a woman who was born and raised here in the Midwest, went to school at University of Wisconsin, grew up in Chicago. She'd ask him to do something, and he would say, yes, ma'am. Any guess what she would say, Jen? Don't ma'am me. That's right. (laughs) Quit calling me ma'am, right? (laughs) You're right. With the quit calling me ma'am, because this exact same thing he was taught was respectful behavior, is now being interpreted as disrespect. Yes, that's such a great, easy example. Yeah. So it's the behavior that we see. We assume that behavior means something from our perspective. And we forget that there might be these many different ways to show respect. 
So why is this concept that you are an expert in and that you speak on and teach on and coach on, why is it so important for entrepreneurs to understand this when they're building a successful business? I am a firm believer that any business issue is a diversity issue because when we think about it, any business issue really is a people issue. Mm -hmm. You put two people in a room, you've got diversity. I don't care what they look like. You know, there might be people, you know, watching this or listening to this. If you're, if you're listening to it, you're, you would see two white women talking and you right. might say, well, they're not diverse. And I'm for those, again, those of you listening, I'm doing the little air quotes here. That makes me nuts that we use that word diversity as a code word. Mm. Because when we say that there are people who are diverse, it implies that there are people who aren't diverse. And we get ourselves in a lot of trouble that way because you put any two people in the room, you've got diversity. While we may both, you know, people look at us and say, hey, there's two white women there. Our backgrounds are going to be different. One thing people wouldn't know about me is that I am a registered member of the Oneida Nation. My mom was Native American. I don't know if you've got that in your background, if you're a registered member of a tribe. I'm like <laughs> vanilla, 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 vanilla. <laughs> Right. So boring. <laughs> so it might be that. It might be our educational background. It might be the generation that we're brought up in. If we think about this idea of culture and diversity broadly, culture is any group of people that affects our beliefs, values, and expectations. And so from that perspective, we all have different groups. Again, it might be our gender. It might be, you know, if we go to a, if we're religious, we go to a church or a synagogue or a mosque. It might be our educational background. The things that we learn teach us to think in different ways. And those are all diversity. So you put two people in a room, you've got diversity. And so small business, I think this is one small businesses tend to miss a lot because they think, oh, that's an issue for big businesses. That's their problem. Well, no, it's not. If you want to grow your business, you have to understand how different groups of people think, how they act, what motivates them, or you're going to leave people out in the cold maybe because of a disagreement that could have been avoided had you understood the differences. Right. You know, you've got me thinking even, we obviously started talking about color. We're now talking about something else, but I'm even thinking generational, you know, Absolutely. like a Gen Xer versus a baby yep. boomer versus a millennial versus a Gen Z or like people showing up with diverse needs, diverse backgrounds. The way they come to the table is just different. Yeah. Really, yeah. That's they a great, great insight. Well, and that's actually, it's so funny you brought that up because I was just, um, I do a, a lot of, a lot of coaching with this tool that I use. And I was just talking to somebody yesterday about when we think about what's going on in the world right now, mm -hmm. especially with COVID and schools and are we open? Are we not open? What this is doing to this generation of kids psychologically mm -hmm. in terms of ideas of safety how they can connect with each other, right. these generational differences, what we grew up with, the events that created us make a difference. And, and I really am struggling for the youngest generation right now and thinking, how is this kind of thing going to affect them? You know, I, I had a friend post on Facebook, he's got a got a son, His son's like a year and a half, you know, they, they've taught him to sign, right? And, you know, kids just naturally want to run up and hug each other, you know, and start playing. And, his son was like, they ran into another kid and, and his son was signing to him, please, please. And he had to tell his 18 month old son, no, you, you can't go run up and hug this kid. And think about, I mean, this is a really formative time in that child's brain. Like what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Right. And, and how is that going to stride us even further? Yeah. Yep. So given that diversity is an issue that everybody needs to deal with, it's not really a political issue. We're talking like it's a human no. issue. I know you have a lot of tools, given especially your education, your training, your experience. Can you give us a tool to help us overcome a struggle that we as business owners might have with this topic? One of the things I like to do is tap into our emotions. Okay. Use that emotional intelligence. When we are confronted with something that doesn't align with our beliefs, values, and expectations, mm -hmm. we're going to get angry or frustrated or mad, right? Because if things are going along according to our beliefs, values, and expectations, of course we're happy. That makes sense. Now, remember what I said earlier. The difference in culture tends to be not necessarily in the values, but in the behavior around those values. Right. And so as we're interacting with different people, we may run into behavior that's different and we might get this feeling like we're punched in the gut. Mm -hmm. okay? When you're getting that feeling, take a deep breath and take a step back and question, is this behavior 
perhaps just different, Mm -hmm. not necessarily wrong, but just different. And so it's a way to use the emotional intelligence that we have to take a step back and start to question whether something is different rather than assigning a judgment value of right or wrong or good or bad. Because I think far too often we we come into contact with something that's new and, and what do our brains do? This is new. Our brains run through this process of have I run into this before? What do I have to compare it to? You know, all this kind of stuff. If it's new and we've got nothing to compare it to, it's perceived as a threat. And so that's why we have that reaction. So check your reactions, pay attention, be as aware as you can in new situations of your emotions. If you're getting that gut check, it means there's something new here that you're perceiving as a threat. Take a deep breath, take a step back and say, wait a minute, this might just be a difference. Let me explore more. And one of my favorite things to do is to ask a lot of questions. And the most simple question to ask is, can you help me understand? Mm-hmm. Right. Because it, it's mm-hmm. completely non-judgmental. Thank you. That's the yeah. one I'm looking for. Yeah, that's that's what I keep judgment. getting from you is. So I love the question. Is this new? Because that's super neutral. Is this new? Like there's no judgment about it. Like, yes, it, yes or no. It's new to me. Right? Like, that's just a circumstance. But then the other thing I'm hearing you say is don't personalize it. Don't put right. judgment about it. It's not like they're doing it to you. They're just doing it. Just like we would do it. Right. I mean, that's the thing. The way that we're taught to behave around is ingrained in us. Yes. And and I think part of this work, too, though, we're afraid of making mistakes. And of course, the cancel culture that we're in doesn't help right now. But we're afraid of making mistakes. And, And there was an executive I was coaching once and he goes, you know, Susan, I learned most of what I know about this stuff by stepping in it. Yeah. And I said, welcome to the club. Because that's the way we learn. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes to step in it, especially people at a high level, at a high functioning level. They are so terrified to step in it because of what you said. There's really not a lot of forgiveness for if you screw up. And there's such a public forum when you do screw up for everybody to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's where that's a big societal issue. (laughs) You know, one of of those big things I I would love to fix, but we're all part of the same system. And I I think we're kind of missing that. Mm -hmm. We all come at it from our own perspective and we're all part of the same system. So it's, it's going to take some grace and some learning, regardless of where you're at in the system, allowing people to make mistakes. You know, again, I, I think about kids. If you've got kids, you can tell your kids, don't touch the stove. It's hot. Don't touch it. It's hot. But they don't know what it's hot means. That's right. Until they touch the <laughs> stove. They it's touch hot, it. Right? We have to experience it ourselves it's to it. really, truly understand the real impact of it. I was just talking about this concept with a friend of mine today. We were talking about the pandemic of 1918. And like, maybe mm. you learned about it somewhere. Maybe you read about it, but you were like, yeah, 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 whatever. That happened a really long time. Or you're the 93-year-old woman in Spain who <laughs> survived it. Right, right. right. But... <laughs> We are living in it now and everything has a different meaning because we are experiencing it ourselves. So given all of the work that you do and all that you see with the people that you work with, what do you think is a big myth or misconception about this work? Ooh, there, there's many. I actually read a little ebook on the top five myths really? <laughs> on diversity. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's one of those things. I think that there's a lot that's there. And in all of my time doing this work, I've kind of discovered that we've not gotten much better in understanding those myths either. So, you know, one of those myths is I'm not diverse. Mm -hmm. With folks from the majority population, that's a very common myth. And, And again, it's a result of us using the word diverse as a code word, right? We say we want more diverse people or we're dealing with diverse people. And all of a sudden it means there are people who are or aren't. You know, the reality is we are all diverse. So that's one of those myths that we've already talked about. Another one is this idea that we can escape diversity. You know, we can't. It just is. It's just a difference. And so how are we going to be effective in our businesses? We have to learn how to deal with it and how to have these conversations. And I think far too often, especially for majority folks, we don't start having these conversations soon enough, again, because of the water issue, right? We're the fish in the water. Right. We don't even know it's a problem is what you're saying. No, no. And And I will be honest, 
you know, diversity and inclusion folks, we, we probably don't help too. I think we're changing up our wording just about every year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've gone from divert. I still just say diversity and inclusion, but you, you will hear diversity and inclusion. You'll hear diversity and equity, equity and inclusion. You will hear now belonging is being thrown on. I think, you know, e- even we struggle to some extent in finding the right way, I, I would say as a profession, in finding the, the right way to talk about it. And I think often when we just say diversity, it's maybe another small business issue, people think about affirmative action. Right. Well, it, it's, it's bigger. There, there is this affirmative action piece of it, which is still very misinterpreted. We can yeah, go back yeah. to the myths question if you want on that, but that's another whole talk. But that's still very misinterpreted. But there's this other piece really in how do we understand differences so that we can communicate and work together better. Beautiful. Yes. So how do we understand differences so that we can communicate and work together? That is the key, right? Like it's not about, you know, it's, it's really just about communication so that we can run our businesses better that the, we can give our, the world what we need to give the world with our business is that um, can you share an example or a story um, about somebody that you impacted with the, with the work that you do? Yeah. Yeah. So I um, kind of mentioned unconscious bias as a hot topic right now. So I guess I'll kind of go there. Okay. Um, first we need to, we need to understand that we're all biased. That's another one of those words that we, we throw around as an insult. It doesn't help the situation we're all biased, get over it. The sooner we can do that and start to recognize that, the better we can be. So the thing is, there's a lot of studies that are confirming bias in in many different situations. And and lots of times organizations look at bias in terms of like the employee pipeline, the, the interview process. And so one of the things that companies are trying to do is how do I mitigate bias in this interview process to make sure that I really do have the best person for the job? And so this company that I was working with try to do that by implementing phone interviews. Because we know that when we see people, right? When we see people, our brains react. They implemented phone interviews and they actually took the names off the top of the interviews. That's another popular thing to do. That's Um, super smart. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that? So we don't see the name and make assumptions based on the name. I'll, I'll tell you, yesterday I was coaching somebody and his name was Kelly. Can you guess what my bias was when I saw the name and then I get on and I'm like, oh, 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 wait a minute. You know what? I had that math teacher way back when who was a man in Kelly, right? And so, so, right. So these biases come in place. So that, so they implemented this process. They took the names off and they did phone interviews. And this guy came up to me and he said, Susan, I got a story for you on this. I'm so glad we did this. He said, I got this resume and this resume, fabulous. I was so excited to interview this person. And I, I, he looked like the best possible candidate ever. He said, and I interviewed this person and he was, and I was really excited because this was going to make a big difference on our team. And this is the best candidate. I hired him, went down to the lobby the first day. And there's this guy sitting in the lobby with a ponytail and tattoos all over. And I thought, oh man, I hope that's not my guy. Well, y'all can guess by now (laughs) that was his guy. And you know what? That guy turned out to be everything this hiring manager needed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And he said, and I know had I seen him in the interview, I would have had that reaction and I probably would not have hired him. That's an amazing story. I used to be, I don't know if I ever told you this. I used to be a high school English teacher and then a college professor. And so I graded a lot of really shitty essays in my life. (laughs) And one of the things that I eventually had to do, because when I would grade papers in my head, I would bring along all the baggage of like, whether this kid was an idiot or whether this kid was a pain in the ass or whether this kid was a smart ass. Right. And so I would bring all this baggage when I would grade their papers and I knew it was making a difference in my grading. So I just started taking off their names and assigning them numbers, assigning the papers numbers. And it made a big difference because I could just grade the paper in front of me, not all the behavior behind it, not all the other papers that this kid had written, just the paper in front of me. And it actually, for me, was a relief because I didn't have to like, am I judging this kid? Am I bringing all the baggage with this kid? Like I could just grade the paper. The end. I love it. 
I love it. That's a great example. And I love that. I think if we could do more of that and start to admit, yeah, I have bias. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's how our brains operate. What can I do differently? So I don't have to worry. I love when you say it took this burden off of me. Yeah. Yes. Because it, because it is a burden. It is. And how much energy are you spending worrying about that instead of really helping a, a, a kid? Right. Right. And now you can put all that energy in there. It's the same thing for the business owners that you work with. How much energy are you spending thinking and overthinking and chewing on this stuff and monkey minding it, swinging from tree to tree in your mind rather than running your business, rather than helping your business grow? So I want to talk a little bit about how you grew your business. And I'd love to hear any advice that you have for entrepreneurs like you who want to grow a business. Yeah, I I think really what's what's most important as you're growing your business is come from a place where you assume difference rather than commonality one of the things that that we know about small businesses diversity deficit actually if you're actually growing your business banks in terms of loans are starting to look at diversity as loan information because they know that when we've got diversity we've got innovation and we can grow our businesses better and and so it, it actually becomes a deficit for you if you don't have diversity and we know that diversity deficits can start to build in as small as 10 people right and that's that's still a small business so being very conscientious about from the very beginning you know, yeah, it's comfortable being with people who are just like you because those are easy conversations. Mm -hmm. But where you're going to get the benefit for your business is finding the people who challenge you and learning how to navigate those conversations, finding the people who have the different perspectives. And so rather than assuming commonality and looking for commonality, look for difference and build that skill in navigating that because it's only going to help you with with your customers, with your clients, whatever kinds of bi- kind of business you're in. You're always going to run into conflict, and that conflict usually is because we're coming from a different perspective, and that's what diversity is all about. So if you start doing that from the beginning, that's going to help you all the way. That's, through. A, that's absolutely great advice. Is there anything else that you want to share with us? Something more we need to know that we didn't get to cover in my questions. Hmm. I, you know, I don't know that there's I, my 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 big thing really is just really use that you really use your emotional intelligence to to guide you on this. Grant others grace when they make a mistake because mm-hmm. you're going to make a mistake someday and you're going to want that same grace. Mm-hmm. And, and I think unfortunately, big companies because of social media, they're very quick to judgment. Oh, we hired we we fired this person because they said blank when it might have been better as a learning opportunity. And I think as human beings, we're smarter and we have the skill of discernment to determine when something was done out of spite and out of hate and out of true racism compared to when something was done out of just purely not knowing. Uneducated. Your ignorance, uneducated. Or having to unlearn yeah. an old pattern. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that, and that's all what this is about. You know, I, I actually, one of the blogs I even wrote early on was about, you know, unlearn and, you know, learn, unlearn and relearn mm-hmm. uh, because we do learn these patterns and, and they become part of what we are. And so we do have to start to kind of question, okay, it still might be an okay pattern for me, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's the right thing to do for anybody else. And that's okay too. That is such great advice. Um, Tell me how people can connect with you, learn from you, follow you on the socials. Yeah. So I'm all on by my name. My name's a little tricky. So yeah, little tricky. I don't, I don't Let's spell it out for people. people. I say that's my husband's fault. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, my, my website is, is my name. It's just Susan. The last name's McCushton. Uh, M-C-C-U-I. S T I O N. It is a tricky name. Yes. Yeah. There's two, two eyes in there. Although, you know, being a smart entrepreneur, I did buy the URLs with all the misspellings. Oh, smart. smart. <laughs> yes. So you can do that. Um, same name on, on LinkedIn or, or, or Twitter or Facebook. Uh, so all of that's fine. Or if you just want to, uh, if you go to my website, I've got a, a click there. If you want to, you know, uh, schedule, message you yep. me a call. or feel free to email me. Um, my email is just my name, Susan at, and day one is actually spelled D A I O N E L L C.com. So feel Great. free to reach out that way. 
Great. Thank you so much for your expertise. I love this conversation and I want to encourage more people to have this conversation. I can tell that people avoid talking about diversity because it's uncomfortable. Uh, I know as a white woman, I'm afraid to say the wrong thing. And I know a lot of other people feel the same way. So I really invite this conversation in and I'm grateful that you brought me your expertise so that I could bring it to my audience. And I really am glad to be in your circle now. Yeah, likewise, Jen. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. And tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.